If you thought that 2022 was a bad year, you better prepare yourself for the ride because 2023 is gonna be a wild one. The housing market is about to crash, the prices are through the roof, while the inflation is ravaging. What is coming will affect everyone and you will not be an exception. So let's talk about the upcoming housing crisis, what caused it, what could happen, and how can you prepare for it. So get comfortable and let's start. Where are we now and how we ended up here? How did we end up with Michael Burry, the man who predicted the 2008 crash, tweeting about the recession? What strategy will pull us out of this real recession? What forces would pull us so? There are none. So we are really looking at an extended multi-year recession. Who's predicting this? There are none. That's his words, not mine. The doomsday is coming, and the housing market is on the brink of collapse. Luckily, the reasons for the upcoming housing market crash are quite mundane and understandable to a general audience. Interest rates hikes. It's all about those hikes and bankers. If we look at the single-family home price, we'll see that the price has largely been on the rise throughout the whole year until June and after started to decrease quite rapidly. The main reason lies in the chart of fixed mortgage rate interest and treasury rate. We can clearly see that the interest rates for mortgages was rising just as was the Fed's interest rates. So banks weren't able to borrow money as cheaply as before. So they started increasing the interest rates for mortgages. In only a year, the interest rates for the 30-year mortgage have almost doubled, rising from 3.5% to 6.2%. As for the 15-year mortgage, the interest rate has more than doubled, going from 2.3% to 5.6%. If we lay over the graph of sales, we'll see that as mortgage rates were rising, less and less people were buying homes. These graphs are not rocket science, and you don't need to have an economics degree to see the connection. Housing market is extremely dependent on mortgages and banks. When interest rates are low, it becomes easier for people to borrow money to buy a house which can drive up the demand for housing and cause prices to rise. We saw that during post-COVID times of 2021. On the other hand, when interest rates are high, it becomes more expensive to borrow money and the demand for housing decreases, causing prices to fall. When interest rates hike and continue for a prolonged time, more and more people become nervous and less houses get sold, which may cause the housing crash. But are we there yet? The situation we're in right now is only somewhat similar to what happened in 2008. One of the only similarities between the conditions leading up to the 2008 housing crisis and the housing market today is that prior to the crisis there was a significant increase in housing prices, driven in part by low interest rates and easy access to credit. This led to many people, including those who may not have been able to afford it, buying homes and taking out mortgages. We saw that happen all the way until the interest rates started to rise in 2022. While interest rates were low, people were buying homes as investments. Since COVID has led a foundation for high sales. While rates were low, the house prices were rising, but as soon as the interest rate spikes became apparent and regular, the prices started to fall. Just look at the graph of a median price per square feet, see how it was rising until June when the interest rate became abysmally high. Yeah, that's it. You may say we're not in a crisis yet since prices are going down steadily, but I will counter that by saying that the speed of price decrease isn't the only thing that matters. In 2008, the prices fell fast and low, leaving a shock-like effect. Now we're seeing a relatively slow drop in prices, but that doesn't mean that it would persist at that rate and tempo. You must understand that it all depends on a human factor. The more prices fall, the more people start selling their houses. And if enough people decide to sell at the same time, that could be a signal for others, causing a panic. But how low can the prices go? How overvalued are current properties? According to Moody Analytics, the current market is overvalued by about 25%. So if the normalization takes price, we can still expect a noticeable price drop. It's necessary to point out that it's very hard to stop prices from falling and in reality prices can go even below that, which can become a housing crisis in the end. It's almost impossible to predict where prices will stop and how long it will take for them to recover to normal, non-overvalued levels. With the 2008 crisis, it took two years to fall to the bottom and four more years to rise to the pre-crisis numbers. Do you think now the situation will be much different? I suspect the timestamps would be 
roughly the same, with the absolute lowest price by the end of 2023 and recovering in 2026. If you're wondering what could happen, I've got an answer for you. A housing market crash would have severe and far-reaching consequences for both citizens and the economy as a whole. When the housing market crashes, home prices would drop sharply and many homeowners would find themselves owing more on their mortgages than their homes are worth. This would lead to a wave of foreclosures as homeowners would be unable to keep up with the mortgage payments. During the 2008 housing market crash, many people lost their homes in this way. The number of foreclosures has spiked and was super high for almost five years until stabilized. Now we still don't see such huge spikes yet, but the rising trend is there. Another effect of a housing market crash is that it would cause a ripple effect throughout the economy. When people would lose their homes, they would also lose their savings and their ability to borrow money, which would make it difficult for them to spend money on other things. This, in turn, would cause businesses to suffer and lay off employees, leading to higher unemployment. This is what happened in 2008. The crash led to millions of people laid off and an overall financial crisis that followed. Thanks to COVID, on this graph 2008 looks like a small bump, but it was really big at that time. Now the rate of layoffs is low and many businesses struggle to employ people. But the low number of layoffs now doesn't mean that all other people have jobs. Don't forget that 10 to 18 million people have lost their jobs during the pandemic, and those people are not exactly succeeding financially right now. So despite the economy being ready to accept new workers, the number of unemployed people is still astronomical. The potential effects of a housing market crash now would be even worse than what happened in 2008. Because the United States economy is much more interconnected now, and the housing market is much more susceptible to the global economic shocks. At the same time, if you're expecting the government to step in and help, that's not gonna happen. The government's help and massive cash infusion in the form of free money to people has caught the inflation we have today and those interest rate hikes that are likely to cause the upcoming housing market crash. It's safe to say that the government saw what such actions can do and won't repeat the same mistake. People will be left on their own while the government will try to not let the new financial crisis unfold. You think we're joking? Michael Burry says almost the same thing but about the inflation peaking in the end of last year and predicts almost doom in the next one. Inflation picked, but it's not the last peak of this cycle. We are likely to see CPI lower, possibly negative, in second half of 2023, and the US in recession by any definition. Fed will cut and government will stimulate, and we will have another inflation spike. It's not hard. Can you prepare for it? Of course, some actions you can take are simple and some are more demanding. The first step is to make sure you have some savings set aside. It's important to have an emergency fund so you can cover unexpected expenses or job loss as it will provide you a caution during difficult times. Another important step is to pay off your debts, especially high interest loans such as a credit card debt. Having less debt will make it easier for you to weather a housing market crash and will give you more flexibility to make financial decisions. Additionally, if your property value values have dropped and you are struggling with your mortgage payments, it could be worth considering government assistance programs like the Home Affordable Refinance Program HARP, or the Home Affordable Modification Program HAMP, in the United States. These programs can help you to refinance or modify your mortgage so you can more easily afford the payments. You should also diversify your investments. Consider spreading your money across different types of assets such as stocks, bonds and other forms of investment you have. It's also important to educate yourself about the housing market and the economy in general, so you have a better understanding of how things work. The more you know, the more informed decisions you can make about your money. So don't forget to read the news and analyze the available data. The housing market can be volatile and unpredictable, and a housing crisis may be on the horizon. It's important to remember that it's always a good idea to seek professional advice before making any financial decisions, and that a housing crisis doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but rather an opportunity for those who are prepared. I will emphasize once again, everything you hear in this video is not financial advice. We are neither an investment advisory service nor an investment advisor. Data and information provided are solely for educational purposes. And don't forget to check out more videos on the channel, like and subscribe for more updates and strategies on how to take advantage of the opportunities that a housing crisis presents. With preparation and knowledge, you can emerge victorious.